Sometimes it's hard to get a grasp of what all these git commands do. I'm trying to show you how you can imagine the commands like pull, push or merge so you don't get confused anymore when using them black letters on white screen. Imagine this is your first day in the office of a company that creates, that produces a book for, the, for this purpose, one single book. And in this company there is this uh, shared space, there is this shared table and the book blueprint, do you call it a blueprint? The book, book blueprint is on this table. Everyone can go to this table and take a copy of the blueprint, take it to their own desk and then work on it and then afterwards like put what they may put what they created here on this part. This is the this is the main the, let, let's say there's a, like a case and in this case there is like there's the, some pages of the book right and then uh, here's your table by the way let's make your table is a little bit bigger and here's the table of Mr. B and these tables are a little bit special because they are surrounded by cubicles I say cubicles but actually I mean non overcoming walls so in your company, it's not allowed for any employee or no em employee can can walk to inside the cubicle. So Mr. B cannot walk inside your cubicle here. He can walk until here, so he could talk to you, but he could never see what is on your table. That's like the rules of this company. Okay, so this is your first day and your boss asks you to do two things. Thing number one is, uh, we finished chapter one of this book, so you please have a test read and like correct stuff, maybe if there are misspellings or the grammar is weird, just correct that and uh, share it with everyone else. And the second work you should do is you should create chapter two. You should write chapter two. So in order to get going, what you do is you first put this thing on everything that's already there. You put it on the copy machine and you copy it and take it to your own cubicle. You have two jobs now. You could actually do the job right on this thing, right on this stack, but you, you kind of want to have a reference what was the original one that you took from there, so you don't want to touch it. It's like it's like buying a book where you, you don't want to mess it up, right? You want to keep the original. So what you do instead you, is you copy this one again, put it here. This is like for your corrections that you can do, that you do on chapter one, and then you copy not this one you copy this one here again and that's for creating chapter two so now you have three stacks here three stacks of papers and it's really really easy to mess them up so you want to give them nice names so you say maybe that's some um, i don't know that's the main one that's the original one original okay and that's the one that's for corrections and that's the one for chapter two Let's call it CH2. So now when you go to the toilet to the toilet for 10 or 20 or 30 minutes and come back, then you still know, ah, okay, this was the original one that I took. These are the corrections. We are doing corrections here. And this is the one where I write chapter two. Okay, so you start doing your corrections here and you're finished with your corrections. So you want to share all your corrections with everyone. But before you put your corrections back here where everyone can actually access them, you want to get them checked. You want actually to ask Mr. B, so you go over there to Mr. B's cubicle. Of course, you cannot look inside, but you can go over there and ask him, well, can you please take a look at my corrections? Can you check? Maybe maybe I did something wrong. So basically, corrections of the corrections. Can you make a review on my work, right? So Mr. B says, well, okay, of course I can do that. Just give me the corrections. Tell me where they are. And you, of course, in your natural thinking, you would just take the papers and give it to Mr. B. But that's not working because you can't do that. This is simply not working this way. This is the rules of the company, right? This rule of the company. So what you do instead is uh, you make a copy of this. You don't want to give your corrections away. Maybe someone steals them, right? So you make a copy and bring the copy here to the shared space table. Put it here right on the side. And in order for everyone to know what this is, um, I don't know, maybe your name is Mark. So you put in like a put on like a post-it and say mark corrections so everyone knows now when they come to this table and they see the stack they say oh, okay that's mark's corrections okay i I'm, I'm not i'm not interested in mark's corrections i'm interested in actually i'm interested in the original 
original okay now it's here in the in the shared space so mr b can actually take it but he will of course not take the paper home. that would be rude he of course does a copy boop, and takes a copy home to his own office uh, to his own table and checks your corrections and figures out well okay everything is fine so he goes up to your cubicle and says well yeah you this is okay you can that's all right you can just put it in the original and share it with everybody Okay, now we're at a point where there are several ways of doing things. What you could do is you could just take your corrected stuff and replace the original with your corrected stuff. Meaning, maybe let's make this a little bit more clear, meaning you put everything that's here in the garbage and just replace your stuff. Or not the other way around, replace this with your correction version, right? But unfortunately, there was something I didn't tell you, right? There's not only two people working on this project, but there's actually many, many more. Let's say 60 or, or I don't know, maybe only 20. I don't know. But uh, you see, here's Mr. C. Mr. C also has a table, but I'm just going to try draw it like this. And while you were working on your corrections, actually, Mr. C also made some corrections and uh, added, actually added a full new page. I just mark it like this. So... In case you would just uh, throw everything out that's already here, you would also throw out Mr. C's work, and that's really bad because uh, he's a very good worker, and you don't want to like mess with him. So what you want to do instead is you want to kind of like um, I don't like to use the word already, but you kind of like want to merge this thing, right? You want to use your corrections and like put them into the original, but also keep Mr. C's stuff. So what you could do is. You could take your stuff, walk up here and like check, okay, what did you change? But that's not good. Many people use this table. You don't want to stand in front of the table. Everyone would be disturbed by you, right? Maybe, maybe by your appearance. I don't know. Or just because by standing there. So rule of the company is nobody does work on this table. So what you do instead is you want to get a new copy of this original one on on this of this original one with the latest updates from Mr. C. So you go there again and you copy everything and you take it home to your own cubicle and you put it on this stack. That's the original one. It's basically you put a post it on it that says, well, this is the one that is mostly equal to this one. Like basically they should always be in sync. Of course, when Mr. C add when Mr. C added something and you didn't take it from the from the shared space, well then it was out of sync. But now copied it again it's in sync now okay now you have the same version that's in the shared space here in your own cubicle so what you do next is um, you create a list of things that you changed in the corrections and you start to do all these changes also in the original one so you do your changes again and there is one thing when you when you hit a problem and that's there's this one sentence that says the sky is blue and you while well, you did your corrections figured out well that's wrong that shouldn't be a, uh, a small t is it a small t should be a capital a capital t right because it's the beginning of a sentence so that was your correction however mr c what he did was he figured well the whole sentence doesn't make any sense so let's just remove it so Meaning, in this version that you now copied, this sentence wasn't even there, right? It was there before, right? In the first version you copied from the shared space table. But Mr. C already removed it. So when you copied it again, when you synced your, your stacks again, it was gone. So in this list, for example, let's say it's, it's, uh, it's this second point here. The second point says, well, on, on page number three, there is the sentence, the sky is blue, and there is a small t, you should change it to a capital T. So when you try to put all these changes that you did here, when you try to move them over to the original, when you try to redo them in the original, you figure, well, the sentence does, doesn't even exist, right? So you get a problem. So, okay, what, what, what's going on, right? But luckily, luckily, there is a log. There's a log of everyone who changed anything so this log says well this person changed uh, this part 
and this person then after that changed this part and after that this person changed this part after that this person changed this and this and this right this is the kind of log there is so from this log you can see that there was actually no mistake with your correction so actually in the version that you had before there was the sentence but you can also see mr c removed it you have this uh, by the way you have this conflict situation when 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 you don't know uh which one is the right choice to do right um what i'm want to what, what i want to say is that you have this sentence the sky is blue and the question is do you remove the sentence do you go with what mr c said and remove the sentence because it doesn't make any sense or do you say well mr c got it all wrong the sentence should be there but the t must be a capital t and then everything is fine right so you have two two choices here right and there is no right or wrong here N not for, not in particular for this explanation explanatorial video video which is right or which is wrong always depends on the situation here exactly like like like, like you have in this book right you, you need to read the book you re you need to read the sentences that are around that is the sentence necessary is this sentence necessary why did mr c delete it and maybe talk to mr c why did you delete it and from that point you can decide well Mm, maybe yeah, Mr. C was right. This, sh this shouldn't exist in the first place. So, well, I just throw my corrections. I, I just ignore my corrections here, right? So I just ignore my corrections here. Okay. So now you have your updated version. Let's make it with this. Uh, uh, I don't know with this this little greenish color here. Let's go with this little greenish color. So this is like the the latest version. And now you can. I like to call it sync again, right? Whatever you did here, you can synchronize this stack with the stack with the with the shared space stack. Um, this is a kind of where this explanation falls a little bit apart. We're not replacing it. Do not think of replacing it, but think of like you bringing it to the shared space. Okay, you bring it to the shared space. Okay, and now everyone can read. Can get your new updated corrected version. So when Mr. C wants to synchronize their version, then or his version, then he just gets it. And maybe Mr. B also wants to get a copy of the latest version, so he also copies it to his local stack, to his local office, to his local cubicle. Okay, sometimes it's difficult to find the words. Okay, so they also they, everyone puts a. Everyone puts a nice post-it on it. Okay, after this very, very long explanation, so what does it have to do with Git? This is basically exactly, not exactly, but kind of like Git works. Okay, so let's make things clear. First, what is this shared space? This shared space is the remote repository. Or like the remote, let's call it the remote location if you're not sure what repository means. Often it's also referred to as the origin. It's the shared space where everyone can access. And these cubicle things, these are the local repositories. Both Mr. B's local repository, not local, local, right? And your local repository. So the local repository is basically just your desk or Mr. B's desk. And then you have these stacks here. You have one stack for one work. And these stacks are in Git. This is what branches do. So you create a branch, 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 tomato, tomato. Create a branch when you want to work on a specific problem, when you want to add some, some new feature. And for each work you do, you usually create a new branch. Unfortunately, the English language uses the word branch and as a noun and as a verb so this is a branch and when you create when you put your local copy here to the copy machine and copy it a couple of times for your own like inside your own space that's to branch so you branch a branch create a branch from a branch okay then when you mr c updated the original version here on the shared space 
And after that, you got a copy of the latest version from the share, from the shared space. What you did there is you got a copy of that one, right? And that's called pull in Git. This is what pull does. Pull takes whatever is on the remote desk, on the origin desk, on the shared space desk, right? And brings it in to your local, to your local repository, meaning to your own desk. By the way, when you ask Mr. B for doing a review, what you did was you put this, you put this on the shared space desk. In Git, that's a push. You push it to the origin. You often say you push to the origin. Or you can say you push to the remote repository. So you bring it to this shared space desk. And then in order for Mr. B to look at it, he needed to make a copy to look at it in his own space. So what he did, I hope you know this by now, he pulled it. Every time when something gets like from the remote to your own local thing, that's a pull. And when you put it back, that's a push. And also, this is the same in Git as it was here. You can make as many changes here in your own space as you want, but no one will ever be able to see them. In order for someone to see them, you always need to push them because only what is on this shared space can be seen by everyone. Okay, then you finished your corrections. You got a review from Mr. B. Mr. B gave his okay. Then you got, it, and then you pulled the latest version where Mr. C's updates were included. And then you did this hook here. You did a merge. And during this merge, during this action of putting what you did and m mixing it, let's call it mixing it with what was originally on the shared space. While you did that, you encountered a merge conflict here. A merge conflict is, oh, T missing. A merge conflict is when there is some human interaction needed, when there's something that is not clear, like there are two different, two changes on the same thing and someone needs to decide which of these changes are better. Like in our case, are Mr. C are Mr. C's changes better because you removed the sentence or were our corrections better? What, what was our version, was our idea better to keep the sentence, but to just make a capital letter T there? And then there was this other thing that is very important to note here. When you finished your corrections, you wanted to push them, you, you wanted to bring them so everyone could see them, right? You got the okay from Mr. B and then you, th you thought, okay, like I, I want to make them public for everyone, right? or for everyone in the company. So I want to put them here. So what you could have done is you could have thrown this here, this out here and just replaced your version, right? This was of course not a good idea because Mr. C's changes would have been overwritten by then, overwritten or like being thrown away, right? But as an action in, in Git, that is actually possible. And that's called uh, Git, uh, I, I think, whatever, it's a force push, okay? I think it's push minus minus force. So what that does is it just removes everything that's on the on the shared space table and replace it with whatever you have. Again, that's very dangerous. It can be even more dangerous when you, for example, accidentally just remove it completely or com replace it with some garbage. So in case you're a beginner, don't use push force. It just brings you into bad situations. In case you're an advanced engineer, you should probably forbid younger developers to actually use the command, there should be like comp proper rights management. Okay, that's 19 minutes in. If you made it so far, I'm really proud of you. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section. If there are other things in Git that you didn't really understand the concept of or that you need an image to, feel free to also put it in the comments. Maybe if I have enough time, I'll make a video of that if you think this kind of video is helpful. That being said, Thank you very much for watching.